Hello everyone, welcome. Today I want to talk about uh, about the Bible. The Bible is a collection of inspired writings. And it's very nice. It's good for instruction, as we're told, as I think Paul tells, tells us, it's good for instruction. I don't read the Bible. You know what I do? I, for example, listen to a little bit of Christian radio. And why do I listen? I like to hear the Bible verses. Then all of a sudden, there will be a Bible verse and somehow it's meaningful to me. Somehow it's highlighted. Somehow I notice it. Somehow I notice it. A lot of verses, a lot of words. It goes in one ear and out the other, but all of a sudden there's one. I notice it. And then I maybe go and look it up. Maybe I talk about it on one of these videos or on my radio program. And, and it's a delight. It leads to realization. In other words, something on the outside awakens me awakens me to what's on the inside and what's on the inside silently points to that or silently says yes i can't I can't describe it but it's little things i also want to mention the importance of little things to notice little things einstein was watching the clock tower and thought about it when he was a little child, he was fascinated by the, by a compass. Maybe fascination is not the right word, but it, it, it called upon him to search for answers. Little things. Sometimes you can be talking to someone and some little thing that they do, some little, you see them talking to somebody else and there's a little betrayal. Or you see a, a certain look in their eye, and it's a warning. Nobody else notices it, but you notice it. Little things that you notice. You don't put words to it, you just notice. And it's somehow meaningful. And then, somehow also, I become interested in something. All of a sudden, for no apparent reason, I'm interested in trigonometry. Then I was, I'm interested in calculus and physics. What's that all about? I'm 70 years old. Because it's good for me. And the good Lord wants me to be occupied with something like that. Do you understand? So um, I forgot what today's topic was. I was talking about noticing little things. And now I totally forget what I, what I originally was going to tell you. But little things are very important. Sometimes someone can be watching a leaf fall. Something about that leaf leads to a scientific discovery, just for example. So, I don't remember what I began to talk about today. Oh yes, the Bible. I totally forgot the Bible. So I don't read the Bible. I don't study the Bible. See, if I were to study the Bible, see, study, focusing, fixating, concentrating, those are hypnotic. Those get you involved in the outside. They actually pull you away from the within and get you entangled or involved with the outside. What's on the outside should merely awaken you to realize. Someone else's error awakens me to see that error is a mistake. I don't hate them, I don't resent them, but I see that it's an error and I see why. I see a little child and all the cute things that they do and I see the innocence and I know the innocence is next to to godliness. 
I know they're very close to God, the little children. And so I honor that. I respect it. If I see a nice person, I don't like them, but I see that they're nice. Okay? If I see a mean person, I don't hate them. I just see that they're mean. You, you see what I mean? And some things on the outside, a word, a phrase, a little thing I see, a scripture verse, the only, the only good they are is to remind me of within or to remind me of God's great handiwork, of his genius. See, if I see love on the outside, then it reminds me of him. He's the creator of love, and I see why love is good. And if I see hate, then it, I see that it's not good. You see what I mean? So things on the outside are not to be used. You can use them for a good purpose, you know, for food or a tool. You can use a tool to build something. You can use a calculator to calculate or your iPhone for some useful thing. But people, people are not to be used to build your ego, to try to impress them, to try to intimidate them, to try to, to take advantage of them. People are not to be used in any way, nor are they to be used to hate or to resent or to judge, to build yourself up by looking down at them. We're not to use other people. Okay? So the outside is very, God's universe is amazing, and there are wonderful things to just see and to marvel at. It's, the outside is good for marveling. Just like the Bible, the Bible, when you hear, read a nice verse, you marvel, you wonder, you see, you understand. But how do you understand? How do you understand? How do you see and understand? It's because the inside, it only awakened you to the inside and the inside is bearing witness. See? And the inside is even giving you more. You can, it actually can begin to flow. I can pick up a nice spiritual book, read a very little bit, and then I see something, then I begin to write, and I have insights, a flow of insights. So the Bible is to be used for that, for that only. See? It bears witness on the outside to what you will discover if you are close to your intuition. Intuition first, last, and always. Intuition, God communicates to us by way of intuition. Sure, he communicated to, to the people who wrote the inspired words in the Bible. He did. You can tell they're inspired because the inside bears witness. But it's the inside that's the important thing. The wordless word in your heart. It's, it's wordless communication. It's heart-to-heart -heart communication. And it's like God says, Look at the wonderful things that I've made and the wonderful book that was that I inspired the writers. And then, but you don't want to use that. See, misuse it to build your ego, to be prideful, to get lost in it. No, so you have to be careful about study. You get lost in it. After you've been reading a lot or studying, don't, doesn't your head feel thick? Not good. Better to read lightly, to scan. I get a book. I look at the front cover. I look at the back cover. Maybe I look at the introduction. I page through it. Maybe I see one thing, one sentence. Oh, that's, that's useful. That's helpful. Oh, let me think about that. Close the book, that's it. See? So the Bible is the same way. It was firsthand to the ones who wrote. They were inspired. They realized it was beautiful. Just think how nice it was when they realized. But now you look at it, it's just inky letters on a page or little pixely things on a screen. What is it that gives it life? It's the inner spirit. 
So I can read some things and nothing, 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 nothing. Put it away. Other times, one word. Wow. See? So which Bible do I use? Well, you know what I do? I like to go to Bible Hub because it gives you a whole bunch of them. It does. It gives you a whole bunch. All of them. I can't name them all. There's the New Living and the Good News Bible and the NIV and the English Standard and the King James and the New King James and the Jerusalem Bible and, and the Phillips translation. You know what? They're all not so bad. I, I look at them all because sometimes one of them seems to talk, speak, seems to say it better than the others. I usually look up a verse. I don't read the Bible. I hear a verse. Wow. Then I look it up. I see all the different translations and sometimes one of them I kind of like. One of the Bibles that I really, 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 really like is um, the Kerboris Manuscript. That was Mr. McDougall's with the Yonan Codex Foundation, his translation or their translation of some chapters of the New Testament from a Kabor, from a, a, a manuscript in Aramaic. And they seem to capture, the, or they did their very, very, very best to try to capture the essence of what the Aramaic language was trying to convey. So that's very nice. I like that one. I have some videos on YouTube where I read a little selection from the Kavoris manuscript and talk about it. So, um, so there you are. So I hope that was, uh, that was helpful to you. And uh, enjoy. You know, what I do, begin the day with a little meditation. Then, if I want to read, there are certain books that are, that lend themselves to realizing, and some that don't. And um, if it does, I might read a little bit of it and see if there's something there for me that day. What is it the good Lord wants me to know or wants me to think about or wants me to realize that day? That's it. And then no more. Stop at that point. Close the book. Don't be greedy. Don't be a pig. Gobbling, gobbling. And then don't go out and try to impress other people with what you read or what you realized. Just be grateful to, to realize, to see, to understand a little more every day.